Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Saturday, April 1st, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's start with April Fool's Day. Typically celebrated in North America, the UK, and parts of Northern Europe. Filled with tomfoolery, fictitious, usually absurd news stories or claims lasting roughly until noon. I've got to admit, I had a little bit of fun, which most of you caught on to with the last story, the haptic helper story. I couldn't help but completely bust a gut with a few individuals, four or five in total, that thought I had lost my mind and believed that it was real. And I get part of that is my fault uh, with how I delivered that. But I thought for sure people would have caught on to the Serbian haptic helper that I uh, highlighted in the story. He doesn't figure in the original uh, Lerpa, good old Lerpa, but if you take his name, spell it backwards, you'll know everything you need to know and hopefully have a good lighthearted chuckle. All right, let's get on with the news, guys, and start with Touch Sense. Now, these guys have been around since 1993, and of course, we didn't usually refer to that type of feedback as haptic feedback. We called it rumble rumble effect. Now, these guys have various licensings that they've offered based on their trademarks and fairly successful through the years. They'd have to be to still be in business 24 years later. Then comes virtual reality and the opportunity for Immersion Corp to really grow the business haptic wise. And that is exactly what they're trying to do. Now, the first thing they're looking at is a tool to help companies embed or embed rather haptic feedback visually through a visual interface directly into the gamer experience. If you're familiar with video editing, you'll get kind of the gist of what they're hoping to do. In video editing, you typically have a timeline. And on that timeline, you can do things. You can split the film, add effects, add picture in picture, video in picture, etc. You get a lot of flexibility. Their tool designed TouchSense to work exactly the same way. So very, very freaking cool. They are currently available as a plugin for Unreal Engine and an API for custom game engines. So if you've got your own game engine, you would use their API. If you're using Unreal, it's a plugin. Unity engine support is planned for third quarter sometime. So you're basically uh, looking at the months July, August, September. So hopefully by October of this year, uh, available for Unity as well. One of the claims of you know added functionality that they're making that they're gonna you're gonna get using their tool is allowing you to embed complex haptic feedback. For example, reloading a weapon typically would be one effect. Using their tool, you could dig right in and you could have it be a multiple haptic effect occurrence. Uh, you know, maybe three different haptic rumbles, depending on what you're reloading and how you're reloading it. So all kinds of potential with that. Very cool. That is Touch Sense from Immersion Corp. Next story, guys. Get a free Gear VR plus a controller with Galaxy S8 pre-orders. Now, in the US and Canada, this offer, and I love the date here, uh, is between now and 420. Yes, I said 420. So April 20th for Canada and the US. If you're in the US, you also can get a free Oculus content pack, which includes a bunch of games. That does not extend to Canada, nor does it extend to Australia, which also has that same offer. But instead of April 20th, they've actually got that offer running until the 27th of the month. So very cool. No word yet. I don't know if that applies to New Zealand, Asia, Europe. Those are the only three countries that they've mentioned so far. Canada, US, and Australia. Now, next story. 
TP Cast wireless Vive adapter to finally ship to China this month. So they originally hoped to ship this in March. Now, you know, they revised that to April. As kind of a mea culpa, thank you for your patience. What they're offering for people uh, is the extended battery. So instead of having the two and a half hour battery, you're going to get the five plus hour battery. I think that's an awesome, <laughs> awesome mea culpa kind of throw in for people, uh, which they will definitely appreciate. We don't know the availability yet for the rest of the world, but they did announce that it will be $249 US for the West. So that would include Europe, North and South America. Next story, Melody VR trying to nail 360 degree video. I've talked often about how amazing a live concert experience is in. In fact, if I could go back and pick a few artists, I would have to say Led Zeppelin live, maybe Earl's Court, a song remains the same, Knebworth, probably Knebworth, day two their final, final concert, because of course Bonham died, with Achilles Last Stand, probably the best version of that song ever. Just absolutely stunning. Of course, then there's the Beatles, even though it was only really the first half of their career that they toured, they would be amazing, Black Sabbath and several others. A Roger Waters Pink Floyd would be pretty cool too. Anyways, Melody VR, they're trying to capture that experience because what VR has the potential to do is be your second best option. If you can't attend a concert, you can attend it via VR. And they're working on all kinds of things. The social aspect of it, you know, having the ability of you and your buddies able to enjoy the experience together via HMD. But first and foremost, it's capturing that live experience. And I've had a pretty varied interest in music. So when I was younger, and I still enjoy heavy metal, probably my favorite genre. But back then, I was really into thrash and hardcore punk. Those were my things. Mohawk, even though I'm uh, bald now, Mohawks and long hair were in effect. Even, uh, yeah, crew cuts like now, right? or uh, complete shaves. But anyways, back then, mosh pits and moshing, we called it slam dancing. And it was different, but essentially the same. Moshing is the evolution of that, right? I mentioned that because it was part of the live experience. What you got as a hardcore fan that you wouldn't get just buying a record as a hardcore fan of your favorite hardcore punk band, right? It's going to be difficult to mirror that type of stuff. But certainly, like I said, as a second best option, they're going to nail stuff like the height. They're going to nail stuff like first row, second row, nosebleeds, up high, all those different areas that all have their own advantages. Like, for example, my current age, standing room, which is, you know, the most expensive tickets for a lot of metal acts. I avoid them now when I try to get seated as close as possible for second row because when that mosh pit opens and I had this happen at several concerts, I just don't have it to be able to maintain 20, 25 minutes of that. And I get pushed back from the front, probably to like row 30, right? So, yeah, Melody VR, they are actively soliciting groups, bands, and building up just a massive library of content, which is awesome. Can't wait to see what they come up with. Uh, they are really selling that second best, you know, besides being their experience. So can't wait to see what they come up with. Next up, speaking of 360 degree, Seeker.com has an amazing article that breaks the technology of each down. There's still some confusion. 
And I see it a lot in the mainstream media when they talk about 360 degree, they call it VR, but they're really talking about 360, which is just one of many things that virtual reality can do. Um, probably one of the more limited things it can do, really, if you think about it. This article from Seeker.com actually breaks those into two different categories, like I just did, but with different labels. For example, they call 360 cinematic VR. So they describe that as short films, documentaries, and episodic series, typically between three to five minutes in length. 360 VR film allows you to put on a headset, sit back, and be at the center of the story from the start to the finish. We can talk about historic temples, ruins, and show them to you as if you were standing there yourself. Now, one of the key limitations, of course, is that pivot point. With 360, you're always stuck to that pivot point. Now, they're starting to move away from that where the pivot point moves, but you've still got that limitation. You're not quite as free roaming as you are with VR. And VR, they're simply calling interactive VR or game engine based VR and according to them it takes things one step further by allowing you to move around a computer generated world picking up objects and moving through a fully interactive environment i.e. not that pivot point imagine your favorite video game interactive VR allows you to become the main character of that game moving through digitally generated worlds transporting yourself through stories that require interaction to be told so very very cool and uh, like i said this story and the last i just i can't wait five years from now guys that vr delivered concert experience is probably just gonna be so damn good i i can't wait like imagine just that fantastic sound system probably 4 or 8K, uh, and it's going to feel like you're really there, or at least as close to second best as you can get. All right, guys, that is it for the news on this Saturday. Weekend is half over. Hopefully, you guys are having a good one and an even better Sunday tomorrow. Cheers, guys.